friends welcome to the third lecture on the course titled offshore structures and the special loads including fire resistant design in this lecture we will continue to discuss about novelty of compliance structures we already said that compliancy is a term related to flexibility if the platform is made flexible it is obvious to understand the platform will undergo large displacements since it is flexible it cannot resist loads only by its strength because its stiffness is lower in that situation it resists load by its relative displacement relative with respect to wave action So, the first of its kind in complaint structures which has a very interesting novelty is guide towers which we discussed in the last lecture partly. Guide tower essentially consists of a top side with all interesting data of the drilling derrick the flare boom the helipad the living quarters etc it rests on a steel tower which is strengthened to resist lateral loads where the mean sea level is about at this place. The tower is resting on the seabed using a spot can arrangement, whereas spot can arrangement acts like an inverted cone. it is similar to cone placed in suction now what is the novelty or what is the displacement offered by this platform which enables the platform to encounter the environmental loads when the platform is in its initial equilibrium position under the wave load the platform is an initial equilibrium because of the spot can action it acts as an inverted pendulum so the platform undergoes displacement or this way interestingly the top side essentially should remain horizontal but the top side will also be slightly rolled or pitched depending upon the degree of freedom. Friends let us try to understand a very important algorithm behind the degrees of freedom which these platforms have. Let us say I have got three axes this is my x axis this is my positive y this is my positive z if this is my origin displacement along x axis is named as such displacement along y axis is called as sway displacement along z axis is called as heave you put your thumb towards the axis remaining four fingers let us say this is my thumb 
remaining 4 fingers will have an idea. So, these 4 fingers will give me the angle of rotation whereas, this is my thumb. So, this rotation about x axis is called roll. Similarly, rotation about y axis is called pitch, rotation about z axis is called yaw. So, these are the 6 degrees of freedom what an offshore platform has in a 3 dimensional stress space. So, now I should say in this case as this becomes a rotation if this is the wave direction if I call the wave direction as x axis I am rotating it about the vertical axis on the vertical plane. Therefore, I can see very well that the rotation can be either named as roll or pitch. So, theta can be either roll or pitch depending upon your angle of approach whether it is along x or along y respectively. So, when the wave hits the platform, the platform rotates about the hinged joint and this causes a differential buoyancy on these elements okay, and that enables for example, initially for the body. for each leg. So, let us for the body I have C G, I have W acting, I have F B acting which is in equilibrium. When the body submerges partially there is a change in the immersed volume on the right side compared to that of the left side. Okay. So, there is a shift in the buoyancy compared to the weight which causes anti clockwise moment. So, when the platform is moved to the right is moved to the right the platform is enabled back to rotate back to its equilibrium position. While it rotates it rotates or recenters faster the platform gets a new position now. So, because of this the center of buoyancy now shifts it causes a clockwise moment now about this point and the platform keep on oscillating about this point. Okay. So, the capacity of the platform to reach initial equilibrium position is called recentering capability. So, the platform tries to recenter. So, this displacement of theta of t or theta dot of t or theta double dot of t displacement velocity and acceleration enables the platform to counteract the wave forces acting on the platform. The novelty of this platform now gets along with the displacement allowed. Now, the displacement is push and restraint in this case the displacement what you see here is actually rotation with a very serious position restraint offered. What do you understand by position restraint? The platform cannot move from this point, but only oscillate about this point that is called position restraint. Since it is seriously position restraint it is called semi compliant. So, the semi compliancy offers resistance to the lateral loads. This platform of course, has some advantages has some disadvantages as well. This platform is lower cost compared to bottom supported structure the platform has got good stability it has got high reusability it offers some decent level of recentering. 
it has got some disadvantages very high maintenance cost it is essentially due to the steel tower which gets corroded it is applicable to only small fields the reason being the restoration or recentering depends on buoyancy force but the size of the platform is limited the third reason could be it has got a difficult mooring system the fourth reason could be let me write down here the system has got spud can support which essentially undergoes continuous rotation and that can cause a fatigue failure the next set of platform what we have in complaint system is articulated towers shortly called as ats articulation is a term related to hinge joint so the platform obviously is supported by a tower and the tower rests on the seabed through an universal joint the typical platform looks like this top side is same as that of the previous case in the previous case the platform had a lattice tower of steel but in this case this can be even a concrete tower which will be now connected to the base by an universal joint to ensure buoyancy and stability of the platform two chambers are attached the bottom one is called ballast chamber and the top one is called buoyancy chamber this is actually the tower of course this is the top side Now, the buoyancy chamber has many advantages it enables buoyancy which induces restoration or recentering this can be also used for storing the explode oil the buoyancy chamber enables reduction in weight therefore makes the structure light the ballast chamber is located at the bottom this enables shift of cg to the bottom which enables good stability of the platform under lateral loads
the tower has got two types of responses one is rotational other is translational ats do not undergo translational response because they are again position restrained by the universal joint they undergo rotational response or allowance in rotation because of universal joint. Now, what is the difference in structural action between an articulated tower and that of a guide tower? So, let us say a guide tower has again a lattice tower which is connected and there are guy wires which are connected to the C bed. These guy wires the point where the guy wires connect the tower is called fair lead. The point where the guy wire touches the C bed is called touch down point. At the touch down point lot of counter weights are added they are called clump weights. They hold these guy lines down. These guy lines are provided circumferentially all around the tower in plan and these guy wires allow the restriction of motion of the tower beyond certain value. So, when the tower inclines this guy wire is straightens and tries to bring the tower back. So, there are two way action in guy tower one restoration is because of the hinged joint which is happening at the spot can the second is by the guy wires whereas in at the tower is similar but in this case it is a transparent steel tower but in this case it may be a concrete tower now the joint is universal joint. It has got buoyancy chamber and ballast chamber. Guy wires are missing in this case. So, therefore, this platform relies completely on buoyancy only for recentering. Whereas, this platform had buoyancy as well as capability from the guy wires as well. So, that is the first difference we can see between A T and the guy tire in terms of structural action. The second is the ballast chamber located at the bottom enables shift of C G downwards closer to C bed that indicates the platform is more stable compared to this. Thirdly, spud can under continuous rotation undergoes fatigue, universal joint will also undergo fatigue, but here the recentering is more or less gentle. So, I should say it is slow whereas in this case it is much faster because the recentering happens not only because of sweat can but also because of pulling action of the guy wires maybe that's the difference between the structural action of articulated tower and that of the guy tower in both the cases the similarity is the moment at the joint the moment at the joint is zero which enables a very simple foundation system So, the similarity simple foundation system both of them actually have a single point failure. 
how I can say a single point failure? It is actually directed towards either the universal joint or the spot cap. In addition, guide wires can also fail by pulling up guide lines. The third similarity could be fatigue failure of the joint. However, the recentering in articular tower is more or less gentle, whereas in guide tower it is more or less faster. So, though the restoration or recentering is faster in this case, it is subjected to more reciprocatory action. So, therefore, Structural responses of this tower is slightly higher compared to structural response of this tower, slightly lower. The third category what we have in complaint structures is tension like platform which we call as TLPs. Now, let us look into the novelty of the design in terms of compliancy. We agreed that compliancy induces flexibility, there is reduction in strength in terms of displacement. What does it mean? The structure is allowed to undergo large displacements and it is because of this relative displacement the structure is able to encounter the later loads applied onto the structure. So, compliancy is an advantage which is protected in the design. Let us see what is the demerit of the previous two platforms which should be overcome in a TLP design. The demerit is faster recentering. that is the first demerit. The second demerit is they had again a single point failure which led to fatigue failure. So, in a TLP these two should be overcome. Let us see how it has been designed. I have a member, I have a column member, I have another bottom member. So, I am drawing elevation of an assembly of four members, maybe in a three dimensional view, looks better. Okay. Like a box. So, these members are called as column members, these members are called as pontoon members. Now, if I have a member which I am drawing elevation now, which is submerged only for the partial level, the immersed volume of this member, this member completely and this member and the associated members on the other directions will have some buoyancy force. All the members will add up to its weight. If I have a design concept where the submerged volume which induces buoyancy is much higher than the weight of the structure, the structure will float. When the structure floats, what are the advantages? It can be easily transported, it can be easily commissioned, let us say installed most importantly it can be easily decommissioned. Now, when I have a system which remains afloat because of submerged volume of this particular elements, the system remains afloat this may seabed, but I want to conduct and carry out exploration in this. So, I have to connect this to the seabed by some mechanism. 
So, I connect this using wires which are called tethers, they are also called tendons, they are also called cables, they are actually axial members which can sustain only axial pull essentially steel wires or to be very specific tubes. Now, we have already said that the buoyancy of the system is much higher than the weight. So, buoyancy is acting upward, weight of the platform acts downward, buoyancy and weight essentially are collinear, concurrent, coplanar. For a given system, when the system is in equilibrium, since buoyancy exceeds the weight, I need to have some arrangement by which this should be compromised. Let us say buoyancy and weight should be compromised. I compromise these two by adding initial tension to the tether. So, the tethers will be all in initial tension. So, this makes my equation of static equilibrium for a given tension like platform. Since all the legs of the platform are in tension all the time, the platform is called tension leg platform. So, one important difficulty which we had in the previous platforms of single point failure is now eliminated because TLPs do not have universal joints, neither they rest on spot can. So, the failure in terms of fatigue failure of the joint is eliminated that is the first novelty we have. The second novelty is in both the cases of AT and guide wires or guide towers, we had a subsystem which are either is a tower or a steel frame which supports the deck. Therefore, they cannot be used for deep waters because the cost will go high. Whereas, in TLP we do not have a substructure at all, TLP actually has only superstructure, the substructure is nothing but tethers, this is my mean sea level. Now, one may ask me a question, I need to have very large buoyancy compared to weight, what is the typical size of a tension leg platform? Okay. Typical size of tension leg platform is about 90 meter by 90 meter by about 35 meters. So, I am talking about a plan of size which is 90 meter by 90 meter. So, the submerged volume of this will be very large, the displaced volume will be very large the displaced volume will be very large which invokes lot of buoyancy, but the weight will be low because I use tubular members and more importantly the portion between the member which is hatched here is transparent to waves, waves are allowed to pass through this. Okay? Any system which remains transparent to waves will attract less forces. So, one point of difficulty is overcome. Second point, since the weight is very low compared to buoyancy, the system sets or floats. So, installation cost is reduced tremendously or significantly. But in this case, now the issue is what would be the typical value of T0, which will be approximately about let us say 15 to 20 percent 
of that of the weight of the platform. Now, I have got a platform whose T 0 is relatively high. How do we impose this T 0 to these tethers? So, what I do is I keep on adding weight to the platform, this may mean sea level, the platform will settle and the tethers will be slackened okay, because of the extra weight added, the diver goes down, connects them, anchors them to the seabed okay, and the fasteners are tightened, then the extra weight is removed and the platform now becomes straight and the additional weight what you imposed will be now gone to the tethers. So, this is called ballasting and this operation is called de-ballasting. By simply adding and removing the weight in the given platform, you will be able to impose pretension in the tether, T0 is called initial pretension in the tether. Since all the legs are always in tension, the platform is named as tension leg platform. What are the typical periods of the platform? Platform has got essentially surge, sway, heave, roll, pitch and yaw, degrees of freedom. Okay? Let us look at the platform here and mark the degrees of freedom. Let us say this x and y axis. So, the periods of surge varies anywhere from let us say 90 to 110 seconds. I am talking about the periods, natural periods. Sway is also almost same. Heave is about 2 to 5 seconds, roll is about 2 to 5 seconds, pitch is about 2 to 5 seconds, yaw is about 60 to 90 seconds. Now, we all know the natural frequency is 2 pi by T n and natural frequency is also root of k by m. For larger periods of surge, sway and yaw, frequency is lower. For a lower frequency, for the same mass, stiffness is lower. So, I can say surge is movement along x, sway is movement along y and yaw is rotation about this horizontal plane, okay? it is about this. So, TLPs are flexible in horizontal plane because the periods are so high. Whereas, heave is a motion along the z axis which is low period. When the period is very low, frequency is high for an higher frequency for the same mass stiffness is high. So, TLPs are rigid in vertical plane. Friends, the novelty of TLP comes from this design. You have one single structure where both stiff and flexible degrees of freedom are combined, is it not? So, that is the novelty. It is because of this combination. TLPs are also called as hybrid structures because there is a combination of stiff degree and flexible degrees of freedom at the same point. Now, let us see what is the guarantee about the structural action. Let us say I have a TLP subjected to
waves in this direction. So, T L p undergoes a new position they are in tension the distance between the C g of this to the g of this nu is called offset the distance between this is set down. So, set down happens in heave degree and offset happens in surge degree. So, therefore, surge and heave are coupled strongly. When the platform moves to the right, the horizontal component of this which is very high value encounters the wave. So, partly the force of the wave is taken care of by the horizontal component of T 0. The vertical component of T 0 adds to the weight improves stability. So, horizontal component of T 0 resists wave and vertical component of T 0 adds weight improves stability. So, T L p being an hybrid system undergoes surge and set down effect or offset and set down together in a given system which actually helps us to encounter the wave loads acting on the system. So, I should say structure is restrained in vertical plane and highly compliant in horizontal plane. Okay, that is why it is called hybrid structure. Let us see what are the merits and demerits. The merits high mobility, high reusability, good stability, low cost for increased water depth. deep water capability, easy installation etcetera. Disadvantages could be very high initial cost, since tethers will be subjected to very high initial tension and change in tension they will undergo again fatigue failure. So, friends one may ask me a question if they undergo fatigue failure how this novelty is better than the previous cases. In the previous cases it was a single point failure the spot can or the universal joint failed whereas, in this case even if teeth fails even if fails the platform will remain float and no damage to the platform. So, no damage to the platform. So, therefore, even at failure there is no structural damage that is a very interesting novelty what you have in tensional platforms. So, friends in this lecture we discussed about novelty of compliant structures, we discussed about guide wires, guide towers we discussed about articulated towers, we also explain about tensional platform, we will go ahead and explain few more in the next lecture as well before we talk about new generation platforms. I hope we are slowly understanding what are those complexities in terms of geometric form of offshore platforms, then what would be the speciality of their behavior under special environmental loads which we will further discuss in detail including the fire resistant design in this course. 
थैंक यू वेरी मच